think Gypsy was probably one of those shows as well. I think Mame, La Casha Folk. There are a few of them that were just, where the book was just so great and the music was so great. You know, usually it's one or the other. I think with, with shows like My Fair Lady, Mame, um, some of those shows, Bye Bye Birdie, you know, the, it was just, it was like a perfect moment. Those were perfect moments in theater. So you, I, I think they were. Anyway. You've co-starred with some of the best people in this business, I believe. Uh, Frank Sinatra? Yes. What was when it I like was, working when with? I was 16 years old, I worked with Mr. Sinatra in Vegas. Tell us about one of your experiences with uh, Frank Sinatra. Well, he was pretty terrific to me. You know, I was warned before I went to Vegas. I, you know, they, they always give you the warnings. Don't talk to this one. Don't talk to that one. If you have anything on your mind, don't go to Mr. Sinatra. Don't talk to Mr. Sinatra. And my first day in rehearsal, he walked on stage and first thing he said was, if you need anything, you come directly to me. <laughs> you know, so there you go. He was a very, very sort of hands-on person, and uh, he was really lovely to me. I, I was kind of not knowing what to expect, because I had heard nine million things from nine million different people. And when I actually got to know him a little bit, I found him to be a lovely, lovely man. We're supposed to have Nancy Sinatra, his daughter, on the show at some point in the near future. Well, she was lovely. She allowed me to... Uh, guest on Seriously Sinatra and, and to do an hour. It'd be nice to have you and her on the show. Today. Oh, I would love that. I think she's terrific. She I, is a terrific gal. Maybe you would too. If her Bernstein comes in here, maybe you will have a piano and you both can sing in the studio. we got to get her Bernstein on the phone. Yeah, let's do that in a couple of minutes after we play your wonderful song, See You in September. Oh, my goodness. How about tell us a little bit about that Well, that became a big hit in Argentina, would you believe it? <laughs> that became a big hit in Argentina. If I go to Argentina... Are you kidding? Well, if you go there, take the whole crew. We'll definitely do a live <laughs> broadcast, TV or radio. I would love that. I would live love to go to Argentina. Argentina. Let's right. go. Let's do it. Absolutely. You want to book the trip, Jim? Yep. Okay, well, let's play your great song here. Teddy Smith, 212-219-9695. You'd like to say hello to the great singer, Julie Budd, from Brooklyn, New York. <laughs> Mr. Bernstein. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 718-755-3841, right? Right. Okay. Question or two? Later. What? I'm sure. How about the Four Seasons? Jersey Boys, Jersey Girls. <laughs> well, we got her for heard. that. Uh... Well, it wasn't really the phone. Was... <laughs> Herb, Teddy Smith, Bob O'Brien, Teddy Smith, WPAT Radio. How are you, sir? Wonderful, wonderful. Well, am I keeping the thing rolling or what? <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. You're the He's best. Love to have you come down here. So you come down here and you bring, you play the instrument, and then Julie will sing. We'll bring Nancy Sinatra. We'll have a whole party here for you. How's that? Set it up in May. Look forward to. Let me put you on the air. Hold on, her. Don't go away. Just make sure your radio and the computer's down, and you know what happens. Woo! Feedback. Hold on. Thank you. Okay, here's her. We got him. Okay, sir. Oh, good. Herb Bernstein, number four. Little boy of mine. Yeah, you'll love it. It's great. Good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Let her be no one play a song. He'll have a cabell attack. Hey! <laughs> 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 you know, studio. You made me record this in Spanish. Oh, really? Howard, how you doing, Howard? You sang this in oh, Spanish? We're gonna have on we have a Spanish Bernstein station, too. Tight. Well, they have All a recording right, I'll put you on right after Herb, okay? You can give me that. I'll play it on. You we'll can play find it online. It'll be five or ten minutes. You can find okay. it online. Because we have a lot okay. of Spanish programs. We're multicultural. Oh, that's right? fabulous. Thank you, We have a 93.1. It's FM all Spanish. Oh, God. I have a whole album of this in Spanish. It's online. I know it is. It's under RCA. Okay. Hello, farewell, say hello to September because you're part of a great music experience here tonight, folks. We have Julie Budd, if you're just joining us live in the studio here at WPAT headquarters near Wall Street, actually a block from Wall Street. Can you believe it or not? 27 William Street, corner 40 Exchange Place. Second floor, and I forgot the zip code, but nevertheless, 
I'm glad you're part of this uh, great live Thank experience you. tonight here, Julie. Thank you. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about your uh, relationship with Herb Bernstein. I know it goes back since you were a child. I met Herb at a place, it's long gone now, this hotel. It was called Tamarack Lodge, and uh, it was in the Catskill Mountains. And I had always gone to sleepaway camp, me and my sisters. My parents always sent us to sleepaway camp, and uh, I was not a camper. I was so naughty. I mean, getting up. Yeah, I used to run away from. I remember. I, think it was I like ran that. away. I too. ran away. So we both ran. I away. I ran away too. And we called our parents. We had to use a dial phone. Remember? You I put, did Camp yep. Granada. I called my parents. <laughs> I had to get out of there. Oh my God! That was <laughs> me. I had to get out of there. I had to get out of there. And my sister's camper of the week. They were wonderful. Oh, they were terrific. Finally, I turned to my father and I said, "I would rather die than have to go back to camp." So the next, the next sum up, my parents took up. Uh, the hotel, the Tamarack Lodge. My mother had a beautiful suite in the hotel, and they put me in day camp. Well, I cut camp because somebody told me there was a talent show, and they said, I dare you to join the talent show, and I did. And that's where I met Herb Bernstein. At the talent show. At the ta but Herbie will tell you the story, because nobody tells that story better than Herbie. <laughs> and was. about what year was that, roughly? If not, it could Late be a couple 60s. years old. In that's... the 60s. Right. Late 60s. And I was 12 years old. And Herbie had just finished recording Laura Nero. Oh, wow. And, uh, yeah, he, in fact, he was just inducted into the Hall of Fame for the work that he did with Laura. And, uh, and Lincoln Center had honored him by allowing him to speak at this symposium regarding the work that he did with Laura. But that was the summer that I met him. And well, the, such loyalty. I mean, it's just, just terrific. What a sweet man, nice man. He's somebody, a sweet, The greatest sweet things about oh, this Oh, yeah, man. Herbie's great. He's great. He's, and he's very smart. Well, let's put him on the air. Herb, you're on the air with Teddy Smith, Bob O'Brien, Julie Budd. How are you? Good. How you doing? Wonderful. As I said, we'd like to have you come down here, and we'll have the piano all set up, and uh, we'll be ready to, uh, I don't know if you want to rock and roll it or do a cabaret or whatever <laughs> way style you want to do it, but we'll, you play, we'll have Julie sing, and it'll be just a fabulous, fabulous, wonderful night here at WPAT. Herbie, how you doing, Herbie? I'd be happy to do it. How you doing, Herbie? Herbie, listen, they, they want to know the story about Tamarack Lodge. Yeah, I how like I followed it. you around and stalked you, Herbie. <laughs> yeah, you, were, you were a pain in the rear end. I was, I was. <laughs> and, but we have, to, we have to preface it by saying that my parents didn't know that I cut camp, they didn't know that I joined the contest, and they didn't know that I was stalking Herbie because the <laughs> MC of the show told me that there was this man by the name of Herb Bernstein that I should get to know. So, so Herbie, Herbie got up there and I was stalking. So Herbie, tell us everything that I asked Julie earlier. <laughs> everything that people want to know about Julie that they don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, or they do know. Or they do know. Uh, gosh, uh, I don't know. Yeah, we, we've been together. Uh, it's, it's crazy. Uh, since, uh, what, around 67? 67. Yeah. 1967. Herbie, 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 but tell... Herbie, Herbie, tell them how I followed you to the handball court. <laughs> Because I, I was saying to her, the finals of the contest are Saturday night, and you have to come. And until he gave me a yes, I just kept following him. Wow! So you so you went all over that camp, wherever he went. If he played handball, I was there. Basketball. If he played baskets, I was there. I was a swimming there, Herb. Do you enjoy swimming in the pool? Was it good? I was there. Was, I was, was there. the water warm or cold? <laughs> I couldn't get rid of her. But uh, the funny thing to, uh, was that. Uh, Whatever it was, a Saturday night, next night, whatever it was, uh, she was in this talent contest, and she got up, she looked, uh, I don't know, she couldn't have looked more than about 10 years old, uh, short, skinny, and uh, she got up on stage, and, uh, 
and she sang, and what was the song you sang, Julie? I don't remember. See you in September? Who, who no. can I turn to and Moon who River? Who can I turn to, right. And who then Moon River. Turn to? And Ted, I'm telling you, I, uh, I nearly fell over. I mean, I, I had a, I don't know, I had to take a drink or something. Now, now of course you were there. She <laughs> was so great. She was so unbelievably great. And she was so I great. I couldn't believe what, what was coming out of that mouth. And all the shows, all the shows that yeah. she's been on. You went to all the shows with her, like Ed Sullivan. Tell us about a little bit about that experience at Ed Sullivan Theater in the Four Seasons. Yeah, well, well that, uh, that that's how everything started, uh, because uh, I told Julie, uh, I, I mean, I was very impressed when I heard her sing, and I said, I'll, I'll take you into the city with me, because we were up in the Catskills, and I was recording Laura Nero at that time, as a matter of fact, I think we were recording uh, uh, Wedding Bell Blues, mm -hmm. and I took Julie with me to the city so she could see what a session was like and all that. And uh, uh, one thing just led to another. Uh, I, I had never managed, I never wanted to manage anyone, Ted, but uh, I, I tried a whole bunch of managers. No one wanted to touch Julie because she was so young. They were afraid she couldn't work anywhere, and it was a real problem. Mm -hmm. So I tried myself, and I brought her to William Morris, and they signed her up. I brought her MGM, and they signed her, and uh, they called the Ed Sullivan Show, and before we knew it, Julie was on the Ed Sullivan Show. And I think she did about four shows. With, and I uh, never did. But the weird thing is, and I never did anything. Yeah. What were you going to say, John? No, I said, I said that the weird thing is, you know, most people, they train, and then they go out in the world, and they practice their craft. I was sort of backwards. I, I was practicing my craft, and then I went and I trained. What did you like most about being on the Ed Sullivan show that you remember today, about some of the questioning of lines... A questioning that Ed asked you or something? No, you no, no, no. The thing I loved most about the Ed Sullivan show was it was like working in a great repertory company. You, you, you uh, produced the show over the course of a week. You had costume designers. You had stay. I had Peter Gennaro as my choreographer. I had the greatest directors. Herbie could tell you we had 35, 40 piece orchestra. Hmm. I, I, it was like doing a grand production and because it was live, they, did, they wanted to make sure that they were covered. Nothing was going to go wrong. They had 12, 13 acts on every night. You rehearsed the entire week. They had costume designers that were spectacular and set designers. It was like doing a Broadway show and you had to Amazing. shove it into a week. You, you, kind, of, weeks you kind of miss that kind of a show these days? I do. I don't know. I think Herbie does too. Well, maybe yeah, we can... Re it was great uh, because that Ed Sullivan show... It was the best of the time. A lot of your young fans, you know, don't don't remember the Ed Sullivan show, but uh, uh, when he was on, the, the whole country watched him, and yeah. it was live, and that's scary. If you think of a singer coming up now,